Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering motivation on your Monday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And our topic for this morning here is uh, live, uh, live preparing to face war, famine and pestilence. <laughs> live preparing to face war, famine and pestilence is our topic for this morning here as we try to do something here to keep you on your toes as you begin this work week. So stop for um, thanks for stopping by here with me and um, doing our live talk here. So welcome again. Hopefully a blessed weekend and you're ready to take on this work week. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord in heaven, we thank you again for the blessings of your word. We thank you again for the blessings, dear Lord, of knowing thee, the only true God. Pray to may bless us, dear Lord, that we might live motivated and inspired lives. Be with us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. So again, we are looking at the topic, uh, live prepared to face war, famine, and pestilence, plagues, whatever you want to face, just live prepared to face it. Very important. And so um, we're looking here at this motivation primarily to keep you on your toes because uh, um, the aim of some of what we're going to cover this morning here is um, to get you to fall asleep or to slumber. Uh, you know the Bible tells us in Mighty Tepid chapter 20, Five about that there's um, the church folks are normally referred to as virgins and some are wise and some are foolish. The foolish ones are referred to as sleeping. Uh, you don't want to be one of those people that are sleeping. So probably that's why you came here this morning. So for me to kind of wake you up. Um, and so we want to do that this morning here. We don't want you to be foolish and sleeping. I want you to be on your toes getting ready for the second coming of the Lord. Because there's a lot going on in our society, and as you even this morning or just perusing the news headlines, and as I look at over it, there's so many things that are happening that if you're not on your toes, you've been eaten. And we don't want you to get eaten by the devil. We want you to stay alive, and so we want to live. So in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, Jeremiah 17, verse 9, we begin with this here. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so when we're dealing in this life, we have to be aware that the heart, the heart of the people around you, and even your heart can be desperately wicked, can be very deceiving, can trick you. So one has to um, go to the word. The word just give it to you straight and give it to you the way it is. Uh, often we're looking at life, we think things are so beautiful. And yet in all that beauty, there's so much danger. So we want to live aware. We want to live awake. Um, we want to be woke. So many people do say in their woke, they're really not awake and they're being eaten every day. Uh, we don't want to experience this. Now, in Matthew 24, verse 7, Matthew 24, verse 7, here comes part of the thought that I have here for this morning talk. Matthew 24, verse 7 simply says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine, pestilence, earthquake, in diverse places so it's a very famous passage of scripture that many people look upon preach about and it is something to be alarmed now this morning i'm going to use it in that um sense i'm going to use it in the sense of uh idea that we should be always on our toes generally being prepared knowing that anything can come around the corner and i'm going to touch on a few different things that um bring about this as it says here nation shall rise against nation normally there's conflict this could be conflict aroused because one nation is covetous or one business you know one nation deal with another nation in business and they start to argue with each other and next you know war break out so it could be covetousness or it could be just unfair dealings whatever the reason is you have to be knowing that right now in our society um in our world there's so much refugees and you think about it, most of them, probably if you went and interview 97%, 87% of those people, they're going to tell you that I can't believe I'm in the position that I'm in. And so now is not the time to be trying to um, get overweight, get sick. Now is the time for you to overcome your sicknesses and get yourself in a position that is a better position. That if something happened, you're not going to be the one saying, I can't believe this happening to me. Um, as I cover here before, how many people um, who probably live in America for years working on the radar illegally and then now they're getting deported and they didn't have a fallback plan. So as you move to life, it's important for you to know that things can change real fast and uh, people can betray you. 
how many people today is going to be getting a divorce that they never thought that they would be one of those people entering into divorce. How many people are struggling with how many sicknesses that they can't imagine they were going to be facing. And you have to know that the heart is deceitful above measure. And sometimes, you know, you're deceiving yourself. Don't do that. Be prepared that anything can happen. You know, anybody can run into a financial problem. As they always say, most of us are one or two paychecks away from homelessness. Um, you know, a loved one can die by emergency that we couldn't fathom. And that's normally the worst situation where somebody died, that especially if they, you're dependent upon them. And all of a sudden now you're thrown into a kind of a crisis or a serious crisis. And so when you live prepared, it's not that you, you're you a frightened because somebody could say, well, am I teaching fright? Um, no, but just the reality of this life that when we are on this earth, we walk to the valley of the shadow of death. And we got to live with knowing um, I'm making preparation for what's going to happen. This is the, the reality. And so remember, we're doing motivation here. So just in case it start rocky, it's not really rocky. I'm just telling you to get going, you know, get going. Many people, they're sleeping and they are unaware that this is not a life of fun and games. And then when stuff strike, they're like shock, you know, because they don't make that extra preparation. So notice here, um, these things are just basically the earthquake happening in diverse places is similar to me, to the war and the nation rising against nation stuff does happen one moment you could be in a nation is very peaceful and next you know there's turmoils even what we see going on in america here now with all the um arguments back and forth between the republicans and the democrats or the liberal and the conservative uh, many people are worried that that could break out into war and yet we have prophecy that tells us that war will come so one has to be on their toes uh, that's what you. That's when you're motivated. You want to succeed in life. Get on your toes. Start getting ready to run, and always prepare for run. It will keep you fit, and that's to me is the best best motivation. So, and there shall be famine, because when you have a war, uh, is a logical sequence of event. Um, Jesus is talking about here. He's simply saying, when there's a war, then there's normally a blockade, as you're familiar with in the Bible, Old Testament time. And today in our modern time, they'll just do a blockade or they'll do um, uh, some sanctions. Right now, Iran is being hit with sanctions because there's a cold war going on in uh, North Korea. So there's going to be people starving. And so if you're there and you can learn to eat beans and rice and stuff like that and eat basically starvation food, you're doing better. Because you know to do it, you know to survive. But people who don't know to survive, they don't know how to, um, you know, you know, live a hard life. For them, it's devastating more than a person who to live a hard life. So this is what I'm saying. Part of your motivation, you need to put down um, the caviar, put down the expensive stuff, and start learning to live tough. And the tougher you can live, when stuff go bad in your life you'll be able to survive more. You're more motivated. You show me a person that is often too depressed. I would say it's a person that they want the ice cream, vanilla ice cream lifestyle. They just want to have everything nice and rosy and beautiful. They don't want to deal with stress. They run away from stress. So every stress that comes, it devastate them because they can't fix problems. You want to be able to know to fix problems. And so that to me is what makes you tough. And the tougher you are is the happier you are. Because when life is good, it's real good. When it's bad, you can handle it. Notice here again, famine. Because normally war brings famine. But when people are hungry, they don't get the nutrients they need to keep their body healthy. So what happened then next is pestilence. Because now they're not having the nutrients. So they start to have weaknesses. Their weaknesses start to turn into diseases. Then they start to infect each other. And normally what we say, that's a pestilence. Now, you might be thinking, wait now, but we always have outbreak of diseases, right? Because so many people, they're in a country where there's a lot of food and they're living as if they're in a famine because their body has no nutrients. And primarily the type of nutrients they need is plant-based nutrients. So you don't want to live like that. I'm going to tell you right now, right now amongst us, people are living as if they're going through famine, pestilence, and earthquake. Um, some people are literally, but some people are living as if that's the reality because they sick all the time. So that's my point here. So just in case you're saying, what? They sick all the time. And 
there's no there's a war going on i believe but we don't see it like that and you know they're just coming out with all kind of sicknesses and disease because they in a war and you say to them uh what's going on man why are you always sick oh man i'm having a lot of family problems and um, i'm trying to sweep it under the carpet the carpet and i'm like that's your problem there you need to fight <laughs> if you start fighting and get tough you start getting sick and and that's the what you need to fight but we're going to talk more about that in a second so famine brings pestilence right and then he says an earthquake in diverse places so there's in this life there's just stuff happening mess happening around us and then there's just the reality of the mess that we're creating so you have to fight back you have to get tough you have to get hardened you have to get mentally hardened battle hardened if you don't get battle hardened you can get eaten you're gonna succumb you're gonna go under and you shouldn't go under because you're walking with jesus because jesus was tough jesus was tough all the way up until the cross and i mean he was tough all the way to the end in other words he didn't succumb he didn't get he didn't get eaten doctrinally he didn't get eaten health wise eat and, and you can see when you read the bible it was tough on his body but he per persevered because one thing i tell you he had temperance he had self-control self-control is one of the most powerful thing you can do in the health message you can eat properly you can do all these things but if you don't have no self-control and you don't exercise and develop self-control you're weak you're going to give it over to all kind of lust and you're going to get eaten and we see people around get eaten how many people that you probably started out with in a christian journey that no longer is going to church no longer is religious and just have all kind of mess going on in their life they're getting eaten by all kind of dragons they're getting bitten by snakes you don't want to be that person so you want to harden up yourself so want to live preparing to face war famine pestilence all that type of stuff and as i said to you here when you look at this text even imagine the person is going through all kind of problems they can maintain good health and then an earthquake come a fire come burn their house down that's devastating see but when you live in and you live in and you learn to get tough when the disasters of life strike don't wipe you out because we're talking about not wiping out physically we're talking about primarily in your mind your mind doesn't succumb and you get depressed and thinking woe is me i'm not woe is you woe is this life you have to be tough if you're not tough you'll be good you're just getting run over and i see people getting run over all the time and i realize they have no spiritual toughness. They have no mental toughness. They exercise nothing. So can't you read in here in uh, verse 24, I mean, chapter 24, verse 15. And it says, here, When you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. So the abomination of desolation is when you see abominable thing happening where it ought not to be. Christ says, get out. And all the people, they'll see abomination happen, spiritual formation in the church. They see all kind of dads and girls up front in the church and all kind of wild and crazy things going on. And they stick around and they disobey Jesus and then they get eaten. They get caught up into it and then they get messed up. You don't want to be in a certain environment because you're affected by your environment. You can be influenced negatively. You got to get tough. Christ says, when the going get tough, in other words, you got to get out of there. So you got to stay fit. <laughs> you got to be prepared to flee. Now, then let them which in Judea flee unto the mountains. Important to note here, he said Judea. Judea would be the area that would have the, the commandment keeping people. People are more serious about the Bible. So he's saying, look, when you see something happening in the temple and the abomination is coming in, get out. Think about how many people... Oh, I left the Catholic Church when I see the priest start raping little boys and they protected their children from getting raped. That's what we're talking about here. You got to get ready to move. But some people, they're like a lead. They ain't going nowhere. And they're getting eaten. All you can hear them is just screaming, screaming. And you be like, man, why are they screaming? They didn't know they're going to get eaten. You get out. You, don't need, you, need, you, know, you need to know to move out of trouble. That's it. You need to know to cease trouble coming. So the only way to live like that is that you have to be on your toes. So I guess I could have titled this morning, Get on Your Toes. You know what I mean when I say get on your toe? Like a sprinter. Sprinter sprint on his toes. He's not jogging or anything like that. He's 
taking off, he's leaning forward and he's going as fast as he can so he don't fall forward. Get on your toes and then you you start pumping those muscles. So this is why you need to be fit. You need to be physically fit. This is why you need to be mentally fit, spiritually fit. Because if you're not, what happens? You see them, they're eating people in the church. You see people falling out. You see people still going to church, but they, you know, you can see that emptiness in their face. They have lost their connection with Jesus. And you, you, know, you say, what happened? They've been eaten by all this life's problem. They tell you all the mess that has happened into their life. They realize they have lost their faith. They believe Jesus Christ is not delivering them anymore. But yet before, you'd be like, they're just sitting there. They're not studying. They're not praying. As I said, they're not prayed up. They, 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 they're, they're careless. You know, they, they, they believe everything, swallow every lie. And you realize they ain't prepared for nothing. And then the trouble comes and they get swallowed. So Christ here says, let him, verse 16, then let them which is being Judea flee into the mountains. Some people are like, I ain't fleeing to the mountains. I'm going to stick around. Because if I flee, then those who get left behind, <laughs> sorry, but those who get left behind, they're going to, well, who's going to help them out? <laughs> they need to flee too. But in here, verse 17, let him which be um, which is on the house stop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which be in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that uh, um, are with child, uh, to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. So now let's, let's deal a little bit more with this text here. Because you know this text here is of its proper application right at the beginning around the time when the dark ages would start to to get up um and going and as the catholic church the christian church was changing into the catholic church and the persecuted church started to be a persecuting church uh so this is that point and this was a point also similar to when the romans was going to sack jerusalem so he has probably two main application i would say a third one for the last days so when you look at it it happened um multiple times so when it happened in the jerusalem time the christians got out so somebody said didn't they not care for the jews that were going to get slaughtered they did and they were there for years trying but there's a point where patience run out god's patience run out and the jews stayed the christians left and they get slaughtered see if you want to survive, you kind of have to be in a mindset that you have to prepare for war, famine, pestilence. And what your major preparation is, you have to be ready to flee. You can't be saying, well, I'm going to hold on to this house. I'm gonna, you know, things change. You got to get going. And in life, what I've realized in life is that at every stage of my life, if I'm not prepared to move, I get eaten. And I always go back and I see the ones that stayed back. They never moved. They never learned. They never got prepared. They always fail. And you go back to see the results. You, you know, I always think about this. Think about the person. Because I, I, I'd see this growing up. And and I and, and I do realize it happened all the time. Think about the person that left the community. There was no jobs. It seemed like there was not going to be no. They're in America here now. And there's no jobs. And it seemed like, boy, things were not going to work out too well. And they decided to leave their community and move to a community where they could get a job and they could advance themselves and take care of themselves and their family. And then probably five, ten years later, they go back. And they go back to that community that they left. And all the friends and family that stayed behind, they go back and some of them dead. Some of them on drugs. Some of them are living basically from one welfare check to another welfare check. And they think, wow. I'm so glad I left. I'm so glad I got out when it was time to get out. And I'm glad I made a call because I could say, well, probably it's going to work out. Let's stick around another year. But they didn't. They got out in time. And when they went back to see everybody eaten by the devil. It's important to know that. And to me, life, life is like that all the time. I just never knew it. I thought, you know, 
you're making certain decisions, but I never knew that in life you're making a lot of decisions like that year in, year out. And at every stage of your life, it is a scenario. You have to be willing to make that call. But if you're not on your toes and you're thinking, la da da da, da everything is going to be fine. Next thing you know, you they just eat you. And you get eaten by life. And I see that happen to people all the time. They can't make the move when it's time to make the move. They're, they're finishing primary school, they're finishing high school, they're finishing college, and they can't make that next step, that transition that need to be in. I've met people who, they're old, and they talk about themselves as if the last time they had, they lived, was 40 years ago, 30 years ago. And I realize, wow, they're still stuck back there. They never lived for the last so many years because they never made those transitions. They never made those hard decisions. So this is why you have to be on your toes. You got to be like, what is a decision that you need to make this morning? You got to make that decision. You got to move, make that move. Others won't make that move because they don't know when to make the move. I like it if a move, you can make it at the right time. You can make it before the right time. That's going to be messed up. Or you can make it too late. That's going to be messed up. You got to know. You got to know to watch. So Christ says, if you see the abomination, watch, make the move. And pray that your flight not be on the winter or on the Sabbath. But you're going to make a move. And it's harder when you think you're not going to. And you don't. Because then you're stuck in that mess. Don't get stuck. Make that move. It's a tough move. And all these type of moves are tough. I'll be the first to say it. But you got to make that move. You got to see. You know, it's like somebody seen their blood pressure rising or they see that their blood sugar going up or they see the waistline getting bigger. And they can't make that move. They're stuck. You ever see somebody that is a fright? They, they got frightened by either accident or they got hit by something and they go into like a, a, a stance where they just can't move. They freeze up and they can't move. And... You see that you say, oh, that's an accident that caused it. Oh, probably the person got injured. But all the time in life, I see people like that. And they're stuck. And they're not stuck because the accident happened. Lifestyle choices, they can't make a decision. They're stuck. They freeze up. And they could be there for 5, 10 years just stuck. And they'd be like, man, that's, this is, I'm in a mess. And you're like, okay, you're in a mess. What next? Well, you know, I'm in a mess. And you see them two years later. Man, I'm in a mess. I'm like, okay, you're in a mess. Yeah, I got that. You've been saying that for two years now. So what are we going to do? Oh, we're just going to sit here and say, I'm in a mess. Okay. We talk. <laughs> so we don't want to be like that. We want to be that person keep, oh, my life, my life is a mess. Things are bad. Okay. Well. We heard that before. So what are we going to do? Oh, we're just going to sit here and say things are bad. Sad. We don't be like that. So we have to live prepared to face war, famine, and pestilence. When you start living like that, you're on your toes. You're ready to go. You know, you're not living and acting as if there's not going to be a health outbreak. As a matter of fact, we hadn't had, I, I said this before, we hadn't had a health like a SARS or, oh yeah, the last one we had was Ebola. So we did have one more recently. But every now and then we have, you know, some epidemic or pandemic and stuff like that. So every time it happens, it just validates what I'm saying here. You know, something comes around, you know what you need to do. You know, like something happening is going around some swine flu or something like that. You know, you could get it because some of these things are contagious and it could hit you when you're tired. There's always going to be a point where your immune system could be so low that you're tired, no matter how healthy you are. So you, you, if you ever get into that situation, your immune system is low, you're tired, you feel beaten down, and then you go past somebody, they give it a swine flu or whatever flu that's going on, whatever H1N1 or N2 or N50. Um, whatever is going around, then you know, okay, um, I, you know, I'd be caught me at the wrong time. You know, first thing, you need to clean, I always say to people, you need to clean out your colon. You need to empty your digestive tract. First thing, your first order of business to fight this is you need to give your, your digestive tract a clean wash. So you get your sen senna 
psyllium husk, flaxseed, your cascar sagrada, and you mix that together, and you flush yourself out. Then you get your clay, your bentonite clay, for internal use, your charcoal, start to take that with some flaxseed. Then you start taking your immune herbs, and you start to drink your water, get your fruit juice, go on a very hygienic diet, most naturally a plant-based diet, very hygienic. You got to be on your two, you got to know. So somebody say, what, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed, you're supposed to have these things ready to go before. You always have charcoal, charcoal, activated charcoal. You always have clay. You always have some flaxseed. You always have some um, something for a laxative to flush your system. Because you're going to empty it out. You don't want to be dealing with heavily complicated food to digest when you're sick. You notice you do what the body does. When you're sick, you lose your appetite. But you don't mind taking in fluids and fruits and stuff. So you, you just work with the body. And you flush. You're always prepared. Because it's going to happen. It's just we don't know when. But when it happens, you're not like, oh man, I'm surprised. You don't want to be like that foolish, the foolish virgins. They say, well, you know, I don't have no oil in my lamp. Like, why you don't have no oil in the lamp? You know there's going to be a delay. You prepare for the delay. So it's the same thing. You know there's going to be trouble. You prepare for the trouble. So when trouble come, it's still going to be trouble. But you're going to be more prepared for it. Or you're prepared for it. So that's why you don't wait for trouble to hit. You prepare beforehand. It's like anything. They say, why do you know, somebody see with an umbrella? You say, oh yeah, because they said it's going to rain today. But somebody says it's not raining right now. It doesn't matter. I have the umbrella because I know it's going to rain. So when it does rain, I'm prepared. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 through 6. We're looking at live prepared to face war, famine, and pestilence. If you're prepared to face war, famine, and pestilence, and you're not experiencing none today, you're doing good. You're healthier. Your mind is sharper. Your body's doing, you know, you're fitter. You're living life and you're more prepared. That's a good thing to be in. 5 verse 3 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So let's look at this text, because this text is often confusing at the end right there. It can be. But there's always this preacher that's preachers out there that's saying peace and safety. If I preach a sermon, there's many churches that they'll ask me to leave. Um, because they'll say, no, you're trying to scare the people. Mm. Not really. Just trying to tell you, we're in this world still. <laughs> so, there's preachers now who preach so much peace and safety that most people would not be able to accept what I'm preaching, because they would say, "Why would you live like that? You know, or, you know, is this is it? You live scared? No, no, it's just notice here it says, "Then sudden destruction come upon them, as travail upon a woman with child." What do you think about that? And he said, "They shall not escape." See, a woman with child, somebody could say, "You see, a woman with child is a travail, it's a surprise, right?" But it's not a surprise. It's a surprise if you're silly, if you're a foolish person. But if you're not a foolish person, a woman that is pregnant and she's at eight months, she knows she's going to deliver sooner or later. She just don't know what the day or the hour. You get, you got that? You, you didn't get that one, right? You see that? She knows she's going to deliver, but she don't know the day nor the hour. And nobody knows this but God. Nobody know actually if she could actually go into, um, have to go deliver that child at the seventh or the eighth month. So she know, but she don't know exactly when. So they now preach in peace and safety, but that's not the reality. So in this life, what it is is that if you're waiting for the big hit, you might get so many hits along the way that you're going to look like you got the big hit. And that's where I think the mistake we make when we preach even second coming. We kind of tell people that only prepare for America overturning turning this constitution or a civil war or um, what we call the, 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 the Sunday, um, you know, the Sunday law, national Sunday law or something. That's all we prepare people for. While they around them every day, they're being hit with war, famine and pestilence. They've been hit with diverse earthquakes in diverse places. They've been hit with all kinds of problems in their life. Family problem, health problem, all these things. And they've been devastated by those things. And the big hit didn't come. 
and they got wiped out of the game before the big hit. You see the problem? So there's things that's going to come upon you and I, and we're going to have to deal with. And it doesn't matter. It don't matter. You know, it's like, okay, we're waiting for the seven last plagues, but there's so many outbreak of diseases that has killed people that didn't have to die because they're not prepared, because they're thinking they're just waiting for the big hit. Or they're not waiting for anything at all. So you got to be prepared for the struggles that we have to deal with from day to day. Since you've been alive, how many financial crashes we've gone through? So if I tell you get prepared for the financial crash that's coming, somebody could say, oh, are you being a little alarmist? No, you're being silly. Don't be a fool. We're going to go through multiple financial crashes as part of life. In anybody's life, they're going to go through multiple financial crash in the country, in any country. So just be prepared for it. It's always going to be a downturn. This is the way God go. Uh, I tell people, if you look at it, and I've preached this here before, if you look at all the financial crashes that has happened in the last hundred years, they almost happen in an average of about one every seven years, just like what the Bible says. Ain't that you should have a, a, a year of release once every seven years. Well, whether a human beings do it, God allows it. It just get wiped out and things reset. And they will do, financial gurus now will do something so that the economy don't crash. Say, they'll make it, put it off to one in nine years or something. Mm -hmm. And then it crashed probably two times the next five, four or five years. That's all. And they readjust. And then we're still at the one in every seven. It works. So if you know this is going to happen, why, why play the fool? Just get yourself financially in a better position. And keep, as I say, prepare, live preparing to face war, famine, pestilence, whatever problem. Put yourself always in a better position. If you know that, you know, if I ask you, say, how often you get a cold? Or often you get a headache? Or often you get a sickness? And you say to me, you know, Lloyd, I'll think about once a quarter. Well, well, come on now. Just get prepared. Just say, you know you're going to get hit once a quarter. Just get prepared. And if you do what I tell you to do today, I guarantee you, next year I ask you, how often you, you get sick? You're going to tell me twice a year or once a year. What happened? By being more proactive, you're reducing your chances because you're acting as if you know what's up and you're prepared for what's going to happen. But when you don't prepare and you're not on your toes, what it is you get hit hard, you get hit often because you're careless. That's all. So we know every so often there's a flu epidemic, there's a this epidemic. Just get prepared. And stop acting as if you don't, you know, it's not going to happen. You know it's going to rain, so go buy yourself an umbrella. And if you don't buy an umbrella, at least get a raincoat. Someone say, why are you doing that? Are you scared? No, I'm just prepared. That's all. And that's what I'm saying here. Take some proactive measures. Get going. If you know that you have a susceptibility to certain disease, fight back. Don't just sit there. If you have a weakness, don't just sit there. Fight back. And when you fight back, what you find is that you're going to be you're going to be less sicker. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. <laughs> you're, you're going to sick less. And you know, to me, like even when you do a drug or you do a supplement, the question is what percentage of people or what percentage of help a person get? Uh, you might not get 100%, but if, I, if you take a herb and the herb help you to reduce the severity of the disease by 50%, 30%, I'm going to ask you, is it worth it taking it? Of course. If I say to you, what's the level of pain you're feeling? You say eight. And you take a herb and you reduce it to four. Is it worth it? Yeah, you just cut it by half. It's just, you're in pain still. Somebody said, but the person is still in pain. Yeah, but in half the pain. It's worth it to me. At least to me personally. So when you prepared and you're fired up, what it is is that you could eliminate the issues that you deal with or you could reduce the severity. It's worth the effort. So be ye brethren, be, but verse 4 of First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So remember, this text here is taken from this idea, this, this part of the scripture that's talking about the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. But the, thief, the Lord coming is similar to like a birth of a child. You know it's going to happen, you just don't know the day or hour. But you know. Uh, you know, when you're looking at a female, not every female show like every other female, but I'll tell you, look at a female and she looks big and pregnant. 
And you know, man, you look like you're like a watermelon that has too much water. You're lacking on burst. And next year, a person talking to me and say, "Oh, yeah, I just burst. <laughs> I need to go to the hospital." So you you gonna burst. So again, the day or hour shouldn't come upon you as a thief in the night. So this is the big hit. But remember, there's the seven last plagues. So obviously, you're gonna have other plagues before the seven last plague. Those are the last ones. So if you know there's gonna be plagues, famine and pestilence, there's gonna be people because they their heart is desperately wicked. They're gonna be doing all kind of evil. Just be prepared. That's all I'm saying. Notice here in verse five. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You see that? Let us watch and be sober. You have to watch and be sober because you have to be aware that, you know, like somebody would say, why would you study history? Uh, because there's patterns to life. Because, see, human nature never changes. This is what the big mistake Europe and America and places like New Zealand and Australia, the citizens are making. They read the Bible and say it's old, so they throw it away. Because they don't understand the Bible is not talking about things in the way they think it's talking about. The Bible is just talking about trying to teach us human nature under sin. When a person is under the influence of sin, they act a certain way. Similar how you could study a person under the influence of alcohol, they act a certain way. It's very, you know, calculated. Everybody has studied out what they do. So when you study the Bible, what you learn is human nature. And human nature remains the same. People will do things based upon the same motivations when on the sin. So when you study the history, you study sacred history, you study secular history. You learn those things because when you see people are in a certain situation, they'll act the same way. I always remember I'm talking to this lady that was a child under Hitler. And she grew up under Hitler's regime. And I was, she was explaining to me the setup that brought about Hitler. And when you, if, if you honestly look at that setup, you can see that we have a similar setup right now in America. So you have to be on your toes because you have to say human nature never changed. So if, you, if, you say, if I say to myself, human nature never changed. It don't matter where I'm at in the world, whatever country I'm in, human nature never changed. And people do things for self-preservation or for their comfort. They don't care about others. So you have to watch because you have to know things could go bad real fast. Because human nature never changed. So you study history to find out what happened then. And then when you see the same set of scenario or the same set of thing, you make a call. So I'll make calls and people are like, oh, you're wrong. And I'll make those calls and I'm going to say it. And ninety some percent time, I'm always going to be right. Somebody say, why are you going to always be right? Because I'm studying the Bible and sacred history, and I'm making a call based upon certain set behavior of human history, not human behavior. But you know, there's always anomalies. So every now and then, you make a call. It's not right because I'm missing something. There's always missing information. So then I keep studying. Then if I make a miss, I go back and study to try to figure it out because I'm on my toes. And you listen to me here. I say things that you be like, you be like probably take up your, your cell phone and throw it against the wall. You get mad at me because you think I'm just absolutely wrong. And I always just give it time. You Because you have to understand my math. Uh, I'm making calculations based upon study of the Bible. And when you make those calculations, you, you're going to start finding repeat human behavior is always the same. So that if you, set, if you set a scenario up, they'll come to the same conclusion because the behavior is the similar even though time has changed. So if you look at verse um, 8, sorry, first uh, Peter verse five, chapter 5, verse 8. So it's in chapter 5 now in verse 8. So first Peter chapter 5, verse 8, uh, family text here. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So that's why I say to you, you watch a person dying of opiate overdose. They just got eaten by the devil. See, it's important for you to know that. See, a person that's pick a gun up and you hear they shoot themselves in the head. They just got eaten. So you want to be able to be sober. Notice, all these people being eaten at a young age, they're drunk and they're under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And so they're being eaten. 
You want to be vigilant. Because if you're not vigilant, you get run over. Because you're not paying attention. You will walk into an open manual cover, even though there's a cone telling you to be aware. But you're on your phone texting, and you walk right into the hole, and then bang yourself up, I have to get surgeries and all that type of stuff. Okay, you're not vigilant, and the devil is going to eat you with an open manual cover. And that happens to people in life all the time. I mean, literally and also figuratively, proverbally, you fall into a manual. Because you're not vigilant. And so me and you, we have to be vigilant. We can't follow the foolish virgins who are just being dumb. They're not, they're not prepared for a delay. They're not prepared for trouble. Because they think, oh, this life is just one big party. Or they can relax and chill. Smoke some weed. It's no time to smoke weed or, you know, marijuana. It's time to be sober. Because people are getting eaten. And we see people fall out of the church. We look at churches being closed because people get eaten. And they think, oh, it's just they go to church for praise and worship. You watch, you show me a person that has been in a praise and worship church. A pure mess in their lives because they're being eaten. Because their past is in a peace, peace, while there's sudden destruction. And destruction is going on in their homes. They're getting divorced. They're, they're the same age I am at and they're at the third marriage. Pure turmoil in their life, pure pain and suffering your confusion but yet they're going to praise the lord and you're like no i'm serious about praising the lord i'm have a happier more peaceful life but somebody said but you're on your toes how can you have a happier more peaceful life because i'm on my toes <laughs> if you're not if you're not on your toes you don't know what i'm talking about so be sober be vigilant this is being vigilant it's why it's called vigilante justice, right? Somebody robs somebody, you go and chop them up and burn them alive. You got to be vigilant because you're going to live. Because your adversary, the devil, is going around like a roaring lion. Walk, sorry. Uh, the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, that's important in the last part of the text to me because you you, you think about this, right? You, you've, I've never heard... Um, uh, no, I think I've heard before a lion roar, but very muted, not like too excited. He just made a little par roar thing. Uh, but I've seen it on videos though, and I've heard that in the wild when a lion roar, it's actually scary. And that's the aim of a lion roar. It's supposed to scare you. But you would think, why would a lion roar and you get eaten? I'm sure you're familiar with this idea. Why the lion roar you get eaten? Now, why the lion roar you get eaten, as they say, I, I, you know, you probably know if it's true or false, is that when the lion roar, the male lion is what roar, and the female lion is what eat you and and kill you. And you see this where the female is the one that go hunting. So normally, I guess what's happening is that probably the male lion, he roars from the west. The female lion attack you from the east. So imagine you hear the male lion roar. You're thinking, that's easy. I get the answer for that. I know. He roars over there. I run the opposite direction. I'm, I'm good. And that's why I believe being foolish and being simple or being a simpleton, you get eaten all the time. Because you want to think that says the devil is going to come. The devil has the Bible. You have the Bible. And you are a surface reader. The devil is a student of the Bible. And you are thinking that the devil is going to be a surface reader like you. And you just need to read one text and you're good. I'm good. I, I, I don't need no help. I get it. The lion roar over the east. I run to the west. Or, or the lion roar to the north. I run to the south. Ah, see? I, I read the Bible. And the devil be like, you're a fool. I'm going to eat you. That's not how it works. It's a little bit more complicated than that. I'm running over here because I set up somebody to eat you over the other side. <laughs> I'm just scaring you into them. It's a decoy. It's an ambush. You know? But if you don't get that in life, you'll be ambushed all the time. So that's why I say, live preparing to face war, famine, and pestilence. You got to prepare that the devil has some tricks up his sleeve. But if you're sleeping, you're going to get eaten by people all the time. And as I say, you think about this question. With all the dead bodies piling up and all the people 
um, losing their brain and losing their nerves and losing all kind of stuff because of drugs and alcohol. Why are more young people keep taking the drugs? Why today as we speak here, somebody just going to try drugs for the first time? And probably yesterday or a week ago or two weeks ago, they went to a funeral. Then th th that tells you that it's not that obvious. If the answer was so easy, you wouldn't find new people getting eaten by the devil. But today, new people are going to get eaten. Because the devil is roaring, but you don't understand how he gets them. Because today or last night, they might went to a trauma or something happened, or they were at a party, they drink, and next you know they're at the gateway drugs. The devil don't come to you and I. So easy. So if you're not on your toes, you're not ready to run, you're not vigilant, you're not sober, you get eaten by the devil. Because what the devil is going to do, is going to roar over here. And you're thinking that male lion with those big fang, fangs is what's going to eat you. So you start running away from him. And the female, just like, here... Here, come let me love you. <laughs> and they love you. <laughs> they love you big time. My chapter 7 verse 15 and 20. My chapter 7 verse 15 and 20. Now, this is one way now. Um, this text here tells you how the devil gets you. Now, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And verse 20 says, Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. So, you think about that, right? This, this is where it's important to know that all of this stuff is always a trick. And he has. this is why the Bible, to me, focused to me so much on fool and wise. Because if it was so simple, people wouldn't get messed up. You know, this is why so much of life is about multi-level marketing strategies, Ponzi scheme, um, about get rich quick, you know, Come to this buffet, it's all you can eat. <laughs> all you can eat garbage. <laughs> and you're like, really? Uh, so how much I pay? You pay $15 and you can eat um, $100 worth of food. And you never think and say, wait a minute. That made no sense. Uh, you're saying I can pay <laughs> $15 and I can eat $100 worth of food. Wow. So what is it called? You making profit? Yeah. We've been in business for years. And we rich. So how, how are you rich and I'm eating a hundred dollars? You're losing. You're running the business. <laughs> You're running the business at a loss. Oh uh, no, no, no. The food we feed you, it only costs us probably dollar fifty. <laughs> that hundred dollars worth of food. You can eat about a hundred times worth what the real value of the food. So what am I eating? All oh, junk. Foods that we you know trying to get rid of that are just garbage food that shouldn't be feed an animal we, we treat yeah we treat you worse than an animal oh my and this is what happening see it's not that simple but if you're simple and most of us are brought up to be simple we don't think as i say we don't never were trained to think about like business think about because that's just a business decision you're making that's not a food decision you might be making an emotional decision to eat all you can eat but it's a business decision you're making somebody say how can it be a business it's a business decision you're just making a business decision but we weren't taught to think about life like that we we're taught to just live life as fools and be eaten by the line and then next you know our heart is stuck and it can't move it's our coronary artery system is just clogged and somebody say yeah it's all that all you can eat buffet <laughs> it's killing you it's some nasty slimy food <laughs> But you eat it every day thinking, oh, yeah, I'm at this all-you-can-eat buffet and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rob them. And you're just being robbed. So beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing. You think about it. Uh, these people, I always find it fascinating how yesterday and the day before, these people packed churches, hundreds, thousands of people in these churches to go get their head eaten, to be eaten by wolves. And they feel proud. It's like, look at me. I'm in this big church and I'm being, eaten, being taught all kind of falsehood. How many people you and I know that uh, they're probably even still going to church, but their minds are gone. They're irrational. They've been taught some of the most irrational, stupid things. And they regurgitate it. They swallow it. They digest it. And they live by it. 
and their life is a mess. And if I tell them, say, hey, look, you need to be live preparing to deal with false doctrines. There'll be a lot of, if you read the rest of the text in Matthew chapter 24, you will see Christ saying, look, there'll be a lot of false Christ. And these people are following all kind of false doctrine and they have mess in their lives. And yet, if you tell them, be prepared, they say, oh, no, all I have to do is prepare for Christ's second coming. I said, well, that's part of the environment before Christ's second coming. There be a lot of false doctrines, a lot of false preachers preaching peace, peace, when there's no peace. There's just sudden destruction. And why? Because as Christ says, you're aware for by their fruits you shall know them. You look at If you look at everybody's being eaten, then you're going to get eaten too. If, if everybody you've seen using marijuana and their, their nerves are being shot, because that's what marijuana does, it destroys the nervous system. It numbs it. And so much of these people have to end up on Viagra after how many years. Why do you think you're going to go there? You're not going to end up on Viagra. You're going to get your nervous system going to get shot too. But somebody go, oh, I'm and then they get go. They can't listen to nobody and they go get eaten. They're going to get eaten then. So many people, oh, they're going to take this drugs or drink this alcohol. And I said, look at all the people who drink alcohol and take drugs. You don't sell like garbage. Why are you going to go down that road? And they go down that road just and go look like garbage just the same way. You see people going over that church, they're all a mess. You never meet a person that goes to that church that their life is not a mess. And you go over there too, your life is going to be a mess. And they're like, oh, you ain't talking to me. All right. I believe in Jesus. Oh, okay. Keep believing in Jesus. You're a fool. And they go over there to get eaten. And the wolf devoured them and they're like, they come out looking beaten up and chewed up and spit out by the wolf. And that's just the reality. And that's what we're dealing with. So you got to get on your toes. You got to know these are a possibility. Notice now here, why these things have to happen? Because again, I just said it. People don't want to listen to truth. They don't want the hard way. They want the easy way. They don't want to pick up their cross. They want to hear peace, peace and, 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 and safety message. They want to hear messages that bore them and put them to sleep or get them jumping and hyping, but they're, it's shallow. And that's what they want to hear, and that's where they get eaten, and that's how it's supposed to go, I guess. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 through 8 says, And I heard in a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. You notice that? Come out, leave. For her sins are reached unto heaven, and God remember her iniquity. Reward her as she has rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. You see, as I always say, you see a person, they're abstinent, they don't want to listen to nobody, they don't want to take no instruction, they want to take no advice. Here comes the beatings. And that's what God is saying here. Verse 7, how much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and shall see no sorrow. How many people you see that? They think, oh, God bless me. I'm blessed by God. I'm anointed. Too anointed to be disappointed. Too whatever stupid to, to get anything go wrong with me. And guess what happened? A pure beating. Next thing you know, <laughs> you see them saying that nonsense, and next thing you know, the devil jump and eat them, or the wolf jump and eat them. And then they're screaming, ah, I'm being eaten. I'm like, I thought you were too anointed to get eaten. But that's just the reality. Notice verse 18. Therefore shall her plague come in one day. Death, mourning, famine. She shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the Lord who judge her. They always like, oh, don't judge me. Okay. God going to judge you. And that's just the reality. So this is why you have to live prepared to face war, famine, and pestilence. While others are conditioning their muscles into fat, you are conditioning your fat into muscle. You're getting hardened. You're getting hardened health-wise. You're getting physically fit. Your spiritual life is on the uptick, not on the downtick. Your social network is developing. You're connecting with believers, not hypocrites. Imagine if you have a lot of hypocrites as your friend. You're in a mess. You just have people stabbing in your back. I've seen people, I'm like, Wow, how many knives they're going to walk around with? They've been stabbed in the back so much because they run with hypocrites. You don't want that. That's going to weaken your immune system and probably punch your lungs. You don't want that. Avoid hypocrites. 
you know, what do you have in your life? You have friends in your life or you have frenemies in your life? You have other people who really are enemies, but you think they're your friends. You don't want that. That's not getting prepared for the end time. In the end time, we're always going to face with betrayal. Hey, but you don't want to live where you're being betrayed left, right, and center. And we, we, there's not even persecution. And people just dropping you like you're a fly. No, you don't want that. How's your financial life? Are you living in a preparedness? Or your financial life is teetering on the edge of financial ruin and destruction? And you're waiting for them to say you can't buy or sell, but you already can't buy or sell because you're financially wreck. Or they're blocking you because your financial situation is so bad that nobody would want to do business with you. See, and you're already experiencing national son in law. You're already experiencing an economic blockade because you're just a mess to do business. See, how is that going with you? How is your benevolence? Are you greedy or are you giving some money back to the church and to charity to help the poor and to help the gospel go? Or are you just eating it all and getting fatter and sicker? And you need to cut back and give away some of that. How is that going? How is your study life? You study in the Bible, you just casual every now and then read it. Or you listen to others study, you never study for yourself. Because that's why so many people are falling into false doctrines. Because they have not fortified their minds. They're a surface reader. They're simpleton in their thinking. If any problem hit them and it's too difficult for them to figure out, they fall apart. How are you doing in that instance? Are you a thinker? Do you think deep? Do you try to figure out and solve difficult problems? Or you want the problem simple and you want a simple solution because you're simple? It's time to stop that and start to get prepared as if you see what's going on around you. You see the fires burning. You see the floods. You see the storms happening around. You see people dying young of all kind of um, you know, diseases because they're going on grinder and stuff like that. You see all people dying because of all kind of obesity problem. You see all the false doctrines floating around in the church. You see all the social upheavals with issues that are going on with race and all that type of stuff. Do you see what's happening? And you see how things are like a, ready to blow up? And are you prepared for that? Or are you saying, oh no, I'm going to just keep going along in life as if all things are peace, peace and safety and God is just here to prosper and to bless me and all. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 through 14. 2 Timothy chapter Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 through 14 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. So if if you're not on your toes, and you're not under pressure, then you have to say, hmm, how is my Christian walk? Verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Very important. So notice it tells us there that evil men and seducers, what's a seducer? A person that's trying to entice you so they can eat you. It's going to get worse and worse. So if you believe that we're just about in the end times, think about how many people are being seduced. How many people you go to right now and you ask them, uh, let me ask you this, you, what you believe, creation or evolution? They're going to tell you, oh, I, I evolved. I came from a pig. I have the, the, the same DNA structure as a pig. And many people believe that. And, and that, that's, that, you see, that's, they just got eaten mentally. They got deceived they got seduced into a false doctrine and into a weird false doctrine and you don't want to get like that because if you believe in that then you could look at a chimp you could look at a dog and thinking that's your cousin and then start to have relations with that dog you don't want to do that that's being eaten you want to live and not die and so i'm gonna tell you that's why he says continue down the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of Knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. Very important. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we thank thee again, dear Lord, for your word. We thank thee for your deliverance. And we pray, dear Lord, that we might be, dear Lord, on our toes, that we might be sober, be vigilant, knowing, dear Lord, that we have a adversary to deal with. And we have men that have given themselves over to the devil. May you bless us as we walk humbly before thee. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow morning again live when we should talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm-hmm.